Hello and welcome to a new video about the electric field. Today we are going to talk about energy in the electric field. Well, last time I already said, okay, if we have a capacitor, I've drawn here once again, if we have a capacitor and there is a current going in and there's a voltage, well, current and voltage is power and it's taking a time, so there must be work, right? There must be work done with this. Yeah. Because actually, when we remember what is electrical work, work actually is the, the voltage multiplied by the current multiplied by the time T takes. This was the electric work. And now, Let's have a look. This, this current is rushing in onto this plate of the, of the capacitor. Mm. So there is Coulomb per second coming. Yeah? And here, this is charged to a certain Coulomb level, yeah? to certain Coulombs. So actually this here, this, is the charge Q of our capacitor. So actually the work, the energy stored in there is UC multiplied by Q. This is, this is the, the contained energy. And of course uh, we know that this Q equals the capacity multiplied by UC. So actually UC equals Q divided by C. That's it. Good. So Let's think what this is implying, okay? So that we have here, let's make a chart. Let's make a chart. Here, here we have Q. What is actually IC multiplied by T. Mm -hmm. what we what we realized here. And we, here we have UC. Right? And now we're thinking, we say, okay, IC is constant. We are charging the thing with a constant, with a constant current. Why not? Uh, so we're charging and charging and charging and charging. So IC is, is growing, continuously growing with a certain gradient. Okay. What is happening to UC? UC is also growing. It's a linear relationship here. Linear relationship. So actually what we are seeing, if we charge this with a constant current, is that UC is growing linear. This is how this looks like. Huh? And at some point we have a certain value of UC. And the certain value of a C is corresponding with the charge, the charge. All right. And now, now we say, okay, this is, this is actually it. Yeah? So I, I am now dividing this into smaller parts. So I'm not saying. I'm dividing this into such small parts. So I'm not saying I have a total time, but I have here a delta t. Okay? And I'm replacing this line with average values for this delta t. Okay, then we are adding here a certain 
delta work, yeah, which is actually, uh, you see, multiplied by IC multiplied by delta T. Yeah. So this little amount of work I am adding in this amount of time. Yeah. And here I'm adding a little bit more work. Here I'm a little, adding a little bit more energy, actually. Yeah? This energy is stored in the electric field there. Yeah? Where else should it go? And so this is always, so I'm summing all those things up. So I'm, I'm summing up all small parts of energy yeah? to reach the whole energy. I'm summing up all parts of, of charge yeah? In, into the charge multiplied by the average value of UC then, uh, and then I'm getting all those rectangles and I'm summing those up and I should get an approximation uh, of the total work. Why I say approximation? Because if it's not exactly linear, then this might not really fit. Yeah? So I can do a little trick. I can do a little trick. I can say, okay, now I think about yeah, this delta D is getting smaller. Uh, then those steps would be finer simply, yeah? would be a better approximation. And now I can imagine uh, that this delta D is that small that I don't even see the steps. Yeah? Only theoretical, there are steps, but, but they're that small that it really does not matter anymore. Yeah? This is called an infinitesimal transition. This is not that important. However, we can think about that. Yeah? We can think about that, that it, this is summing up a lot of, lot of small of these rectangles. Yeah? A lot of small rectangles. What is, I mean, we are building here, we are building UC multiplied by this. Yeah? We are building here the area. So we are building up this area here. This is the area if we, because we're getting then this line with small little tiny steps we cannot see anymore. And this is the area we are calculating with those little tiny steps. Okay. Exactly that is the area. And this area is representing the energy, the stored, the, the stored energy, the, the, the work which has taken to charge this. Yeah? So this is actually we, yeah, the work, the complete work. And let's think about what this is. So if we have here charge to a certain level Q, yeah, here we have Q. That's the current charge. Now that's the current charge of our accumulator. And here we have the current value of UC. What is the area? What is the area? This is a rectangle, right? So the area is UC multiplied by Q and only half of it. Because we are not the whole area, the left upper part here, this is not part of it. And since this relationship is working. Yeah? This is also, if we are replacing Q, then it's UC, UC squared multiplied by C. So C multiplied by UC squared. And this is actually the same as one half and now we are replacing Q squared divided by C. Yes. Since we usually only know the, the voltage, yeah, the usual, the usual way to write this is that That's the content. The energy content of a charge capacitor. 
right? and this half here we know now where it comes from okay here comes this half from this area here that's the usual notation and now I said uh, it is stored in the energy the, 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 the energy is stored in the electric field so usually we're interested what is the energy density okay so what is the energy density energy density is energy so joule uh, per volume unit let's see what is the volume here the volume here the field volume yeah is a multiplied by d so the area multiplied by the length of the it's clear hopefully yeah and a small This is the energy and this is the energy density. This is the volume, field volume. Okay, this is clear hopefully. And now I'm going to insert those things okay so I will simply write here this. so let's see the energy energy density equals and now we have here one half uc cube divided by the volume okay. so this is one half ucq divided by a multiplied by d and maybe someone now it's really hard to see but maybe some of you already noticed i write it a little bit different one half and now i take this uh, q divided by a hmm? this is this part and u c divided by d just written in another form and now let's think about what we see here what do we see here yeah. well q divided by this, this this charge divided by this area where we set the electric flux is passing yeah so we have this q is already the the, the, the according to gauss's law yeah, this is already the electric flux uh, because it is what it is contained in a closed surface and we only have field in this direction so this here this here this is the electric flux density d this is the electric flux density and this here, the voltage divided by the area where it's distributed, this here, is the electric field strength. This is the electric field strength. So actually what is written there is one half multiplied by D multiplied by e now there are only field units there are only field units there is the electric flux density there is the electric field strength and nothing else so that's another hint that it's really true that the energy is stored inside the electric field that's it huh? that's it so this is the energy density of the electric field okay. 
And since we know that those two have a relationship with D equals E multiplied by some factor epsilon, uh, depending on the on the material in between, then we could write this into different forms. Yeah? So we can say that's this. Right? And then another form would be uh, if we say D is E multiplied by epsilon, it's E squared epsilon or it's if we bring this to the other side d squared divided by epsilon it's all the same so this is how you can calculate if you only know one of those parameters you use this yeah and this is how you can calculate the density the energy density of the electric field energy in the electric field it is really stored there <laughs> Good, huh? Now we know what a capacitor is. Now we know how much energy can be stored inside inside these capacitors and so on. Yeah. Uh, when we had resistors, when we had resistors, we made several uh, connections with them. We had it in parallel, and we have serial connection. Yeah? And what can we do with uh, with our our uh, capacitors? We make parallel and serial connections. Why not? Let's see what is happening if we have uh, parallel and serial connections in with capacitors. Capacitors will be in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.